perform and complete a full two main hypothesis test with dependent samples, p-value approach. First, let's look at our problem. Now, this can be a little overwhelming when you look at all of it. So don't forget, grab yourself a piece of paper, write down the important notes as you go. It'll make everything easier as you go through. So, a pharmaceutical company claims its new medication will make a difference in the number of monthly headaches for those who suffer from migraines and conducts a study of eight regular migraine sufferers. The number of headaches that each patient had in a particular month before taking the medication was recorded. Then, during the next month, the same eight patients take the new medication of headaches is recorded. The results of the medication student are shown in the table at the right. Assume that both populations are normally distributed. Is there sufficient evidence at alpha equals 0 0.01 to show that the number of monthly headaches has changed with the use of the new medication? So we are looking at a difference before and after. So note that the difference, our variable D, will be found by taking the number of headaches before the medication minus the number of headaches after. The order of that matters, so make sure you're paying attention to that. We will now work through the test procedure and interpret the results of this hypothesis test. Before we jump into that, let's review our steps. We will first identify the null and alternative hypothesis. We will decide on the significance level. We will compute the test statistic. We'll find the p-value. And after we get all of that finished, we will be able to interpret the results of our hypothesis test. Let's jump in. Step number one, identifying the null and alternative hypothesis. Recall that the null hypothesis always shows the equality, and the alternative hypothesis is going to have the inequality, whether that is less than, greater than, or not equal to. In our particular question, we want to see if there is a difference. So that simply means not equal to. Therefore, our null hypothesis is going to be the mean of the differences equals zero, because if there is no difference, the difference will be zero. And our uh, alternative hypothesis will be our mu sub d is not equal to zero because it's a difference in the number. So because we have not equal to, this will be a two-tailed hypothesis test. Next, the significance level. In the given problem, we know that the significance level is 0 0.01, so our value of alpha is 0 0.01. And now computing the test statistic. When you're getting ready to do this, it is important to locate the correct formula. So our formula, we're going to be dealing with the t distribution. We'll have the mean of our differences minus our uh, claim of the mean of difference divided by the standard deviation of the difference uh, divided by the square root of n being our sample size. Having the correct formula allows you to make sure you pull the correct information from your uh, problem. So in this particular problem, we are not given the information. We have to find it. So we're going to have to use that table to find the different parts. So first, subtracting the old minus the new, right, before the medication minus after the medication, find the differences, and then taking the mean of that. So we find the average of the differences to be 1.25 using your formula of finding the standard deviation of a sample we'll find the standard deviation to be 1.98 rounded to two decimal places and we have eight different patients so our sample size is eight knowing those three pieces we are ready to plug those values into the formula because recall that our mu sub d is part of our claim that's going to be the value of zero so when i plug those in Make sure you're using uh, parentheses in your calculator to show the correct order of operations. That does make a difference. And we come up with our test statistic of 1.79. Great. Now let's move forward, and we're going to use that test statistic to find our p-value. So this is a two-tailed test, as we know. Therefore, the p-value is the area to the left of the test statistic times 2, because it's going to be symmetrical in each tail. Now, we also, because we are dealing with the t distribution, must have degrees of freedom, and we know that is found by taking n minus 1. Our sample size is 8, so 8 minus 1 is 7. Our degrees of freedom are 7. So we go into our t table in order to locate the p-value. The line degree of freedom of 7, and you're going to notice that our test statistic of 1.79 is not located on this line. This table is 
pretty bare bones when it comes to the values that are there. So we need to find where does it fall? Well, 1.79 is located between the two given values of 1.415 and 1.895. Therefore, the p-value is going to lie somewhere between them. And because we have to multiply by two, we end up with the p-value being somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2. Now that we have a general value of our p-value, we can use that to find the result and interpret our hypothesis test. Remember that if the p-value is less than the level of significance, the conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. So in our case, our level of significance is 0.01 and the p-value is between 0.1 and 0.2. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is way bigger than our level of significance. Our interpretation at the 1% significance level, the data do not provide strong evidence to show that the new medication changes the number of monthly headaches for those that suffer from migraines.